Jesus, the word forever true, always the same. Hallelujah. Jesus, the word forever true, always the same. Hallelujah. Jesus, the word forever true, always the same. Hallelujah. Jesus, the word forever true, always the same. Hallelujah. I believe. God's breath is God's capacity. So I'm going to be focusing on capacity. And what I mean uh, in this topic is that when God breathed into man the breath of life, he was actually imparting his capacity into man. So God's breath is basically God's capacity. Now, we are going to be reading from the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 1, from verse 26. I'll read several chapters here. Now, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created he, him. Meaning man, male and female created he, them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now in Genesis chapter 2, uh, the, the word of God is more specific on what God did in creating man. Genesis chapter 2 uh, verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, I want you to take note of that. The first scripture we read just spoke about how God created man in his image. Male and female created he them, and the fact that he blessed them. But in this particular verse, uh, it's most easy, the scriptures get more specific about what God actually did in forming man. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Other versions say a living soul. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bed of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a, a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Now, I want us to take note of something here. Uh, which is very significant if we are going to understand and uh, you know, grasp what I'm going to be sharing on concerning capacity. Now, the, the, the word of God in Genesis chapter 2 says, well, initially, the first, chapter, uh, the first uh, verse we read, the, the passages of scripture we read, referred to how God, uh, there was a conversation in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Let us make men in our image after our likeness. Now, we, we all know that, you know, th th this was not a reference to God's physical appearance. That was not a reference to that. Because when we read the Bible, and except when we are talking of Jesus, the Son of God, who actually had to take on the form of man after creation, not before. So, uh, <coughs> when, when the Word of God refers to uh, God's image and his likeness, it's obviously talking about something else, referring to something else, rather than the physical appearance of God. And when we read the Bible, especially in the books like the book of Ezekiel, where there are a lot of references to the image of God, you find that uh, God is a spirit, and he can take on any form that he wants to take on. But what I want us to grasp here is that uh, 
after God had created men and women, he blessed them. You have to write that down. He blessed them. He created them in his image. Then he blessed them. The sequence of all these things is very important because that's what helps you. That, that is what is going to help you to be productive as a Christian, to, to be effective as a Christian. You must understand. The fact that God blessed them is significant because it means that blessing was going to impact their lives or cause them to do something. So it's important to understand that God created men first and then after creating them, he blessed them. And after blessing them, not before, he commanded them to be fruitful and to multiply. So you want to take note of that sequence. And you don't mix things up. Conversation in heaven between in the Godhead, between God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us make men in our image. Then they go ahead, create men. After creating men, bless men. After blessing men, command men. Amen. To do something. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible is more specific on how God created men. The Bible says, from the dust of the earth, God made men. So we want to assume that he took some mud, because you can't just take dust. You, you, can't, you can't form anything with dust, because it will just you know, fly away. So obviously what is being referred to here is that uh, you know, uh, God, we don't know, but we want to assume, and I think I'm right. So he took some mud, some clay, or whatever. Then he formed this image, like the one we see on you. You know, a, a man with legs, a nose, eyes, and so forth and so forth. And maybe there was a table there. Let's assume there was a table because it couldn't have been on the floor. Maybe there was a table there. And God forms this man, you know, nicely and finishes. Now, <clears throat> then we, we want to consider sequence again. Because after God, these things didn't happen at the same time. The forming of man from clay and the breathing of life into him. So again, we assume that after God had finished, you know, creating over, you know, forming this, uh, we can call it this thing. After forming this thing, now you have to understand that after whatever it is that was lying on the table, if God had left the room and then wanted to send his angel to pick, to do something on, on that thing, he couldn't have said, go and pick up the man who is on the table. That's not what God was going to say. If there is a dead man in a house, you don't say, go and pick up that man. You say, there is a corpse in there, bring it here. Because it's dead. Amen. Amen. That's why it's called a corpse. A corpse is a description of something which is lifeless. So that thing which God created <coughs> from mud, formed from mud, was a thing. <laughs> it was not a man. And the scripture demonstrates that because after he had finished forming that thing which couldn't walk, which couldn't talk, which couldn't communicate, which had no capacity whatsoever, after he had finished, the Bible says, <coughs> he breathed the breath of life into, into that thing. And it became a living soul. Amen. So, we also want to take it for granted that before he breathed the breath of life, he could not talk to that thing. He could not give instructions to that thing. Because it, it, it would not be able to respond. It only became a responsive thing after God had breathed the breath of life into it, and then the Bible says, that thing became a living soul. So, since we are in agreement that the image of God is not necessarily that the form that was made from the dust, we now understand that the image of God was whatever it is that he imparted into that man, into that thing. And from everything that happened afterwards, it gives us understanding that the image of God is God's capacity. That is the image of God. It's not the physical appearance. It's the capacity of God. Which means God imparted 
something of himself, a divine part of himself, into man, and then man became a living soul. Hallelujah. So, then after that, you know, that's when uh, he began to look into things like, well, this man needs a helper, <coughs> and so forth and so on. <coughs> and then he was giving instructions on what that man should do. Now, <coughs> that which is formed of, of the dust was different from that into which life was breathed. We must acknowledge that difference. We must note the reference to a living soul. We must acknowledge that there's a, there's a difference. There was a, before the, the life was imparted, there was no life. After the life was given, then that thing came to life. So there's a difference there. There are things that that thing could not do until God imparted something of himself into it. So that difference is very important. It's, it's important to take note of that. Now, <clears throat> there are two levels of, of divine capacitation that I want us to take note of. Two levels of di divine capacitation uh, that, that I want us to take note of. When man is conceived and when he is baptized in the Holy Ghost, those are the two levels of, of, of divine capacitation. When a man is conceived at conception, and when he is baptized into the Holy Ghost. Again, it's important to take note of those two levels of capacitation. What I mean here is that when a man and a woman <coughs> come together, and you know, the, the man's seed is passed on into the woman, and it encounters the female egg, we all know that life begins when those two come together. So, what it means, because that is a human being, that is not that thing we are talking about. It's a human being which actually begins to grow, breathes, and so forth and so on. The moment there's that encounter, what they call conception, at that point of conception. So which means there's probably a triune activity there. It's the man's, egg, the man's sperm, the woman, female egg, and something from above. You can't ignore that. It's not just a biological thing. Hallelujah. That's why you find people who are anti-abortion uh, argue because they say they, this is now a living thing just like in the word of God. This is a living soul. Because according to uh, you know, the, the, the way that God made things, when the sperm is by itself, nothing happens. It's a thing. When the female egg is on its own, it's a thing. But when they come together, then there is that drawing of uh, divine life, and it becomes a living thing. And you know, even when the doctors look in there, they say there's a baby in there. There's a baby, it's growing, and so forth and so on. So it's a life. Amen. Now, <clears throat> what, what, what I want us to understand is that every human being, and I'm not talking about born again people, every human being is an element of the divine in them. It's important to take note of that. The moment, a hum the, the moment there is conception, it means uh, <coughs> there is something of God that is in there. This is what differentiates us from animals, which clearly demonstrate that, they are, uh, demonstrate that human beings are a higher form of life than animals. Human beings are born with this. Through this, they have common sense. Now, th th this is important now. That thing which was lying on the table had no common sense. That thing had no capacity whatsoever to do anything. It couldn't be responsible. It couldn't function until the breath of life was put in it. So then it began to have all these things. Now, when it comes to uh, human beings that are born of women, uh, they have common sense. They function productively. They have a sense of responsibility. They, they behave constructively in social settings. They are born with this. Amen. So before you even... Now, this is also important because this is the way we want to challenge people and to challenge ourselves. There is something wrong with a person who is born and grows up and they don't have a sense of responsibility. 
They are not productive. They are not constructive. There's something wrong. You don't need the Holy Spirit for that. You just need to be alive. They have common sense. So that's, that is where we have the difference, or where we have this situation where a non-Christian is more successful in life than a born-again Christian. Because what they are simply doing is they are drawing from the divine element that is in them, which gives them common sense, productivity, and so forth and so on. These are not supernatural things. It's supernatural in the sense that it's divine. But, you know, this, this is what is expected of anybody who is born. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, w when a man is born, whether they are Christian or they are non-Christian, they behave in a certain way which demonstrates that God gave them life. They have the life of God in them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we expect things from... You, you need to think about these things, you know. We, we, here is a non-Christian. Jesus said the children of this world are much cleverer than the children of the kingdom. But one thing I know is that it's just a lack of common sense. It's laziness. It's glorified stupidity. <laughs> when a person doesn't want to activate the things that God put in them, you know, you, you, you can be in this room, we are in this room here. Maybe if I take this, uh, this, this thing here and I put it here. Common sense will tell you that it's not supposed to be there. But if this room is full of dogs and cattle and monkeys, <laughs> they, they, they are not bothered by this. They will, they will just come and do <laughs> on top of it. And maybe some of them will be tripped and so forth and so forth. They, they are not like human. They don't think. But a human being will know that this thing is not supposed to be there. That's common sense. And you don't need the Holy Spirit for that. That's why we have problems even in church, you know, when certain things happen. Because those things do not require the Holy Spirit. They just demand the divine nature of a man which has common sense, which operates productively and, you know, that. So, you know, some things, of course. Now, we, we need to be very careful here. Common sense is not as common as we think. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, so some of it we have to impart it into people. That's why education is important. Yeah. Don't assume people know things. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, and people, sometimes when people don't know things, they are not stupid, they just don't know. So that's the purpose of education. But education is not grade one. Education begins at home. The moment you hold a baby, you begin to educate the baby. Amen. Amen. So, you know, you, you have to educate the baby. That is if you are educated. So, you know, there is a problem there. You can have a parent who is not educated, so the child will never be educated. Yeah. That's why it's important even in church to teach things which have nothing to do with going to heaven. Things which empower people to live here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, the, you know, I, I, I remember I've, I've met this situation. For instance, somebody, who, uh, I know one lady, and I understand she had, had uh, like four different housemaids working for her. And he's always firing them, firing them, firing them. And then she asks for another one from whoever will be supplying her with those people. <laughs> Maybe an aunt in the rural areas. So they're, they're in the rural areas, they go to this home where there, is the, the, there are these people who have no money, they've never been to town and so forth, so they get hold of another child there, or another woman or whatever, and then they bring her to this woman. And then the first day, this child doesn't even know what a microwave is. Stupid! You don't know what a microwave is. Hey, I'm from the rural areas, they, even electricity is not there. How come you did this? Why, why, why didn't you do this? I don't know. <laughs> but I've got capacity to learn. So if you teach me, I'll be able to do that. So there is capacity. That's why even uneducated people sometimes can get educated, more, more educated than, than born again people. It's that divine element 
which is almost at a biological level. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must never forget that. And we must never also forget that <coughs> animals, you can't teach animals like human beings. You can train them. But you can't teach them. They don't comprehend. They don't understand. They, you never get them to do something because, because they understand why they have to. No, no, no. You can train them even using the carrot and stick method. You know that if I do this, I'm going to be beaten and things like that. But human beings are not like that. They are in the image of God, even when they are not saved. They understand. They have capacity to learn. Hallelujah. So sometimes you find non-Christians understand finances better than Christians. Because they have learned. And Christians are just saying, I'm waiting for this Aprakata thing. You know, they want oil. They want this prophet to say, wait over them and so forth and so forth. And you look around, the billionaires are people who are not Christians. Because they are using, at that level, their capacity to understand the intelligence, the capacity to be productive and so forth and so on, which God put into people, which you won't find in animals. So there is that capacity. That's why it's important uh, to, to be informed about things. Yeah. I have worked with people who don't have common sense. Amen. Totally lacking in common sense. Hallelujah. Yes. And I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> whether it's at church, whether it's at home. You know, you, you, you're wondering, what, what is going on here? Totally disorganized. No, no capacity to think in an organized or systematic way. And nothing. And they also don't want to train themselves to do that. We don't want to blame people for not being able to do certain things. But if you are a human being, you've got capacity to learn. That's what part of what God breathed into man. Hallelujah. You become, and the, uh, certain aspects of common sense, don't wait for people. Sit down. Be a thinking person. <laughs> you know, some people are not thinking people. They don't think. How can you be told everything? You are given a brain. You don't want to think. So, because when you think sometimes, you know, you reason, you know, animals don't reason. Humans think, they reason, they weigh things, <laughs> they contemplate, they, they go through all those motions. That is the image of God in us. That is the capacity of God in us. So, even though the capacity is there, it might need training and so forth, but it's there. So it's important if we are leaders. You know, sometimes we, 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 we do these things like retreats and so forth to train pastors or say you need to go to Bible school. But some people think, no, the spirit will tell me. <laughs> One thing that I want you to know, the Holy Spirit is not very polite. He doesn't teach you social skills. He comes to deal with supernatural things. So don't, don't, you know, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit created you, why should he teach you manners? I mean, that's not his business. You need social skills to live well with others. Amen. You need social skills to live with others. And it's just common sense, you know. Uh, you know, have you ever met people who, if they go into the bathroom, they capture the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom is captured, you can't go there. And they, there is one toilet in the house. There are 10 people in the house. When they go into the bathroom, they spend an hour there. You want the Holy Spirit to teach you that. <laughs> but when you go into the bathroom, remember there are others. Oh, man, remember thou that there, is, there are other people who want, want to go into the bathroom. Yeah, people, even when there's food, if it is a pot of food, you want to eat all of it. But there are five other people in there. They just don't have any capacity to, you know, capacity to think. Or even, even when they have a car, you know, have you ever seen somebody who just parks his car in the middle of the road? <laughs> as if it's, it's on his farm or something. Just parks it there, gets out and, and leaves. 
So, we need to understand, even as leaders, that they, if we want a productive church, sometimes we need to teach common sense. <laughs> it's very expensive to be surrounded by people without common sense. So that needs education. So you are a leader. Even, even you as a leader, you must be a thinking person. Amen. Sit down and think. You know, I, 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 I'm a thinker. That's why I find I write a lot of things. I can sit for hours just thinking, <laughs> weighing things, turning things over in my mind and in my, you know. So I think about everything. Even when people say certain things, you know, they, that's how I end up having a different perspective. Because people will just say things, especially these days, you, you don't have thinking people. You have social media people fed by social media, fed by public opinion, and they are just saying things from the top of their heads. And they don't think. I remember one time, you know, there was all this talk about how we need uh, young people. We need, look, I really don't care whether a president is 150 years old, as long as we get fuel and electricity, <laughs> and we can go into a bank and get our money. Don't care how old the president is. Don't tell me, hey, we want somebody who is 40 years old. I know a lot of stupid 40 year olds. <laughs> and I know a lot of excellent, brilliant 60, 70 year olds. I know very wonderfully intelligent 30 year olds. 20-year-olds who are much more sober than certain 50-year-olds. So if you don't think, you, you never think about all these things. You, ju you just get carried away by whatever people say. I'm over 60. You think I would entrust this church with some 30-year-old in here? And you know, I know countries where the, the presidents are 70 years old. Don't mix issues. You can have a wonderful 30-year-old president. Or you can have a 30-year-old president who is hopeless. <laughs> what will make that person good is their capacity to use what God gave them. And the common sense that they have. Even the selflessness, the love for others, all those issues come into play. So, God gave us capacity, and uh, there is that capacity. Uh, we are different from animals, we are different from trees, we are different from everything. The moment the female egg and the male sperm come together, there is a divine element which comes in. And this has nothing to do with the new birth. Amen. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the new birth. It is just something, the way that God made it. So, we, we need, as a church, Value the training that you get on what you need to do in God's work. Also, as a, as a, as a leader, <coughs> know the importance of training people. As a parent, you need to understand the importance of training people because they have not experienced these things before. Preparing people for the world. Preparing people for living with other people. Let, let me tell you something here. I, th this is very important. You don't want things which neutralize God's capacity in your life. Because the capacity is there. What you want are things which, you know, activate uh, that capacity. And common sense comes into play. Now, let me tell you something which is very personal. If I look at a person, now there are... The, and I want somebody uh, who is going to work for me. If I'm looking at things from a business standpoint, there are things I would consider. I'm not going to just take anybody because, you know, uh, human rights is a free world and so forth and so forth. No. You, you come to me and you're wearing those trousers which look like they're about to fall off. I don't want you near me. Because for me, it just shows, uh, you know, it's, it's a reflection of certain defects in your personality. <laughs> Do you know that there are certain people who are out there just to prove a point? Do you know touch it? Do you know touch it? Do you dress a risk it and pick a chit? Arpa hundu! 
Haka, when I look at that person, already I understand that this is war. <laughs> this is war if, if I bring this person. Now, I'm not going to hate the person. If I have the opportunity to help the person, I'm going to help the person. But you know, everybody has got layers around them. Do you know that? Yes. There are people I want here. There are people I want there. There are people I want there. There are people I want out of sight. So, if you ignore certain social trends and perceptions, you will be in trouble. You have a boss, and you want to behave to your boss the way you behave to your, to your fellow worker there and so forth. You won't last at that job. I don't care how much you speak in tanks. <laughs> so there are things which help you to release God's capacity in your life. It's biblical. You know, you know be careful with the world today because they, they will push you into doing things which are not very good for you. <laughs> uh, but the code, codes of conduct are everywhere. Even in a home. You can't have the best of both worlds. There are certain things. You must know that there are times when you have to let go of one thing to get another. Because there are some things which are unfair and petty. I know that. You know, just harassing people over why well, I don't like this. And that. But you know, sometimes if you are taking your life seriously, there are things you take seriously. There are things you think about. So, as a person, you know, a, a young girl walking by, uh, you know, somebody, you know, you get, somebody gets raped because she was wearing this very short dress, almost naked, and then she w passed through a group of windies. We all know windies are not normal people. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know the United Nations Charter of Human Rights. And women's rights and so forth and so forth. Where do you think they heard about all that stuff? So something happens there. Why don't you think? <laughs> Why don't you think? It's your life. I remember when I used to see this girl a long time when we, the ministry was still starting. Every time she's going to Harare to her sister, we're in Gwerde. You see uh, at the, at that last uh, garage in Gwerde, you know, hiking. I saw her several times, you know. I said, I see her jumping into this car, and there were like three, four men in there. I said, are you normal? What if somewhere in the bush, in the middle of nowhere, that car just turns into the bush? You are the only woman in there. <laughs> now, raping women or assaulting a girl because she's wearing a short dress, it's, it's, it's her taste, is wrong. <laughs> But I'm talking about you <laughs> and your capacity to think and your capacity to exercise common sense and your capacity to protect yourself. You know, your boss may know the law. And he knows, you know, the law says what he doesn't like about you is not an issue. But he'll find something to use to fire you. <laughs> if you are not a thinking person, then you can go to court and so forth and all that and all that. And all that. But <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, so that's the first capacity. God breathed into man and he became a living soul. I did church. Holiday <laughs> December. It was December holidays and everybody was leaving. So we had these relatives, two were business people. And, uh, <coughs> and they came to my father and they said, no, we give us some, some, some of your, uh, you know, 
uh, kids or some of these young people who are here to remain at home. I remember one uncle of mine <coughs> insisting <laughs> that he wanted me. So my father said, no, he's not the oldest. You know, there are others here, even if workers, you know, he said, no, I want the same. <laughs> so I actually remained at it. Then there was this other guy who was left at the other home. So he didn't know, he thought these people, it was Christmas, he thought they were going to be away for three days. The second day he organized a party. <laughs> I mean, there was serious beer, everything there. And when they got drunk, they left the house and left all the doors open and everything. Went to Mambo Township and all that. And, all. and then the owner of the house returned. <laughs> what were you thinking? What were you thinking? So common sense is not so common. Let's help one another. <laughs> it assemblies teach practical issues of life. Teach practical issues of life. Even, you know, some of those uh, uh, the children who, who are homeless, teach them what they need to do when they find a home to stay in. When people get a job, teach them what the best manners when you get a job are. That will increase. It's part of activating and stimulating your capacity, your God-given capacity then those people will be productive not only to themselves, but even to the work of God also. So uh, we don't want this thing about uh, breakthrough. Your breakthrough today, amen. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough what? There is no breakthrough here. There are simple things that people do which open doors for them. Without fasting, without anything. Not... Not saying that when people uh, don't fast. Uh, Sunday after Sunday, one is talking about breakthroughs. Every day. There's something called responsibility. So, which is found in saved and non-saved. So, so when you are a leader, I'm to not talking about church leaders. Even parents out there who are hearing this message, take time to teach your children to activate and, you know, uh, and use the cup. God-given capacity that is in them. So that they live. Remember what the word of God says. Jesus grew up and he pleased, he found favor with both God and men. Samuel, again, grew up and he found favor with both God and what? And men. Hallelujah. Right. Now, now the second supernatural reception, uh, the, 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 the second uh, level, so I, I, I hope, did you get that? Every human being must understand that they've got capacity, God-given capacity. You need to activate it. You need to use it. Whether one is a Christian or a non-Christian, you, you will find that some people will prefer to employ a non-Christian than a Christian. Because sometimes Christians take too much for granted. So, <coughs> now the second level. Now, is the supernatural level. So don't confuse these two. Now, if we go to Acts chapter 2, uh, th th this is our second uh, level, which is the, the Holy Spirit coming on our lives. So that's the other capacity which comes on believers. Those who have believed in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now, th that's the second level. Now, this one is for supernatural uh, empowerment. In Acts chapter 2, verse 40, it says, And with many words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. That's Peter. We all know Peter. We all know Peter the fisherman. We all know Peter the man who rejected Jesus. We all know Peter the fisherman who couldn't catch fish. At some point. But who, after Jesus had commanded him to put net on the other side, caught a lot of fish. We know Peter, if we read again in, in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 6. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I will give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. 
rise up and walk. And the cripple stood up and walked. That is the second level of, of capacitation from God, which is that of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, now, God gets very angry when we do not have faith or fail to produce what he capacitated us for. He gets angry. I used to wonder about that. You know, why, why does God get angry when we... Uh, <laughs> now, I was sharing with Pastor Chikori when we were standing outside. Do you know that sometimes we, we, we dwell on things that, God does, that don't bother God as much as they bother us? Do you remember that at one time Jesus was walking and he saw a fig tree? And he wanted to eat some figs. But when he looked at the fig tree, he didn't have any figs. What was his reaction? The Bible says he was angry. <laughs> Jesus was very angry to the extent of cursing that poor tree. Then this same Jesus one day was walking and he saw men holding rocks ready to stone a woman who had committed adultery. Different reaction. So, if it was men, she would have died in seconds. But what bothers us does not necessarily bother God. Yeah, because uh, this will tell you that God hates unproductivity more than he just hates a, com hates a committed sin. Because when people commit these sins, you know, they, they repent and God quickly forgives them. But how do you deal with unproductivity? It kills everything. It kills the church. It kills God's work and so forth and so forth. Do you know that I, I remember uh, when uh, uh, Matimba was preaching and I, I had never really taken note of that, that when uh, that master came back to the, one of those guys who had not done anything about his talents, he was called a wicked servant. <laughs> Jesus never called that. When Zacchaeus you know, came, Jesus didn't call him wicked Zacchaeus. He says, come down, I'm going with you to, to it. So, we, we, because God knows this lack of, this failure to utilize capacity is dangerous for everybody. Not only in, 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 like on the short term, in the long term. When people are seen, you know, they ask for forgiveness and so forth. In the short term, everything is de dealt with. But when you have an unproductive person, there is serious damage there. So God gets angry, very angry, when we do not have faith or fail to produce what he capacitated us for. So I was also saying that, you know, sometimes the things that make us angry are not the things that make God angry. You know, there are things that uh, really make God angry, especially when it comes to capacity. Uh, to, to what we use, how we use what he gave us. Now, if we go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, I was just trying before this to weigh, to, 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 you know, to show that there are some things which make humans angry, but which don't necessarily make God angry. And that way you begin to see the, the level of importance that God places, especially in the utilization of the capacity that he put on people or on anything. Not the committed sins per se, but the failure <laughs> to be productive. So everything is, you know, a sin is a sin, but we also need to use the way the Lord reacted to all these different things to understand the importance that he places on our utilization of capacity. Now, <clears throat> If we read in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, God, I'm saying God gets angry when we do not have faith or fail to produce what he capacitated us for. The, the, the Bible actually says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. <laughs> now, what does that mean? It means you will never be able to make God happy if you don't have faith. You can't please him. If somebody is not pleased, it means he's angry. He's not happy with you. So the absence of faith means the absence of God's pleasure. <laughs> That's what it means. And that should tell you something. Now, if we go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, it says, This is very important. For indeed the gospel was preached to us. 
as well as to them. So everybody received the gospel, Hebrews 4, 2 to 3. The gospel was preached to us. And it was also preached to who? To them. But the word which they had did not profit them. Because it was not, uh, here it says, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So, <laughs> you know, we are talking of two groups of people here. They all had. They had just, just the same way that we had. This is every leader's dilemma. Do you know even right here, if I say, I want to pray for you, some will receive, some won't. <laughs> even after I've preached. Because it all depends on what you do with what you hear. What do you do with what you hear? So here's a group of people. They heard, they heard. But these ones did not mix it with faith. It was just a nice word. It was just, you know, it was powerful. It was good, it was powerful. So there was no transformation. That's why even when you are preaching at Crusade, you preach and some come and get saved, some don't get saved. I was talking to one of the elders, chatting with one of the elders in this church. He, he's an elder. He works. He's an accountant. But he started a church at a certain place. And the church grew in South Africa. But he's an elder. He's not a pastor. <laughs> he's an elder. So after the, the church had grown, they were transferred to another city. And they went to that city. And in that city, where they live, we had another pastor. There were about four or five people in the church. But within a month, these people were over 20. Under the leadership of the elder. Now today I, I asked him to, you know, I, I, where is my computer bag? Just give me my phone quickly. I, I, was, I, I hadn't spoken to him for quite a while, so I sent him a message and I said, look, uh, how, how are things? He says, I know that everything is good. <laughs> you know, because he had been quiet for some time. So, so he says, he says to me, how are you, Baba? Kuno munyasha. We are fine here. The work of God is growing. Zinoshamisa. We managed to buy my instruments at Kushandi Sapa Church, namely Yamaha keyboard, eight channel mixer, two speakers, cordless microphones, and five connecting cables. Zura, I was doing door to door. I, 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 a certain guy, uh, then a certain guy who has a full set of drums gave his life to Jesus. Uh, I want Jesus, and all my equipment will work in the house of God. And at the same complex where he is staying, four other people promised to come to church tomorrow, meaning tomorrow. What I can say is, Machinda a living word, Alpabas. Now, there was this other guy who was there for three years. There were four people. <laughs> then there's this other guy who, who is not even a full-time pastor. Now, the church, the 20 number I spoke about is uh, maybe two months ago. I don't even know right now. They even have equipment and everything. But this other fellow was there. And you know, when, we, when, when this uh, elder moved in, he started going around saying, this church is a cult, meaning this church. It's a cult. They teach false doctrine and so forth. And so on, you know. so <coughs> this is what happened. So he had the gospel and this one had the gospel. Why are we getting two different results? This is what makes God angry. Because what this simply means is that there is capacity. <laughs> and the other one understood that there is capacity. And he rose up to the occasion and began to use that capacity. So you, we, we need to understand that we are not things. We are living souls with divine capacity. At two levels. At the natural, biological level, there is still an element of the divine there. Then at the level that where we are at, where God breathed on us, his spirit is still breathed on us. 
It's his capacity. So God, and I can give you lots of testimonies similar to this. So God will never command you to do what cannot be done. You, if you want to activate your capacity, if you want to, there is no way God will come to you and tell you things that cannot be done. You don't, you don't say to your child, okay, drive to the shops and get me a bottle of mazoe. When you know your child can drive? You don't do that. So if you, whatever you tell your child, if you say to your child, go and get me a cup from the kitchen, it's because you know that you've got that capacity to do that. Because you are normal, and God is more normal than you are. So he's not going to be telling us to do things that can't be done. If there's a command over our lives, it means it's something that can be done. So, if we go to Genesis again, verse nine, chapter 9, verse 1, we are talking about capacity, God-given capacity. As you are sitting there, you are capacitated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At a natural level and at a supernatural level, you are capacitated. And the reason why God gets angry is when nothing happens in your life. That makes him angry. Your sin does not make God as angry as your failure to be productive. So, in Genesis chapter 9, I'm finishing now. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. Then God blessed Noah. Remember the order of things. Noah has been in the ark, and now the water is gone and everything, and Noah comes out. The Bible says, God blessed Noah and his sons. Then it goes on to say, saying to them. Amen. Amen. Saying to them. After the blessing, saying to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the, in the sky. On every creature that moves along the ground and on, on all the fish in the sea, they are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. God does not just say things for the sake of saying things. One day I was walking, I was fasting, I was in Botswana many years ago, 70, 76, there about 77. And I decided to, my sister had joined me in Botswana and she was living in another part. I went to see her this suburb. So I was fasting, I'd been fasting for days. As I was walking, I realized that the people in front of me were running away from something. But I continued walking. And then when I got to where those people, I said, what's the problem? They said, there's a big dog there chasing people. Now, you know, I, I had been fasting. I was hungry. I had no energy whatsoever. Yeah. Running was out of question. <laughs> so, and, and this road, you know, it was like, if I ran away, then I would have to go back and then take another very long route. Where I was, I was just, you know, maybe 50, 100 meters away from where my sister was saying. So I, I, I'm there and I said, what am I going to do? I said, I'm not going to run away from a dog. I'm a child of God. I've got authority over that dog. I'm fasting, I'm praying. I want to see if I'm going to be eaten by a dog while I'm talking to God, while I'm having time to fast and pray. I said, no, I take authority over that thing. I'm not going to run away. So I walked. I continued walking. And all these people were running. And I continued walking. And I got to that gate where that dog was. And I remember seeing it from the corner of my It was big. I mean, a big black dog. And it was coming for me. And when it was near, I turned around. And I said, in the name of Jesus, go back. I remember clearly that dog let out a yelp. Wow! I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I, mean, I just pointed at it and said, go back <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And it ran back into the yard and I walked away. This happened. Amen. And this is what the word of God is talking about. Every creature will have a dread of you. It's a capacity. <laughs> now, because of the fallen nature of man, which is restored when we receive Jesus as our personal Savior. 
but not in all his perfection. I will never walk into a, a bush where I know there are lions. Again, that is lack of common sense. That's irresponsible. But I guarantee you, if I find myself in a place where there's a dangerous elephant or a dangerous lion, and I know I can't run away from them, I'm not going to run. I will exercise my authority. I will exercise my authority. And I've exercised it many times. <laughs> many times. If I have to do something, if I have to go into a home and I know that there are dogs, if there are wild dogs, but I know I must go there, I will go. I am a Christian, I am a spider, I am a spider. I So, you have this. And the other time when we were in Botswana again, we were living in this place where there were snakes. I mean, it was incredible. It was near them. It was me, another, there was this other brother called uh, Lakimo, he's senior pastor of, of uh, Agape Ministry. Calling here to the pastor, senior, the bishop of Harvest Time, Harvest Ministry, we, we, he was there. We were together, and another one called Innocent and so on. And then I, I remember one day all the others had gone, I think, to the dam to fish or something. And I heard this noise outside, but I knew that when you hear those birds, th those who grew up in the rural areas know this. You know those birds which make a lot of noise and you know there's a snake. Mm -hmm. So I was pray I was actually praying. So I heard that noise and I said, ha, those birds I remember, I heard that when you hear that sound, they, they've seen a snake. And I, when I went out, I saw this big green mama trying to get into the house. So I threw rocks at it. We had been there, staying there for a while, but I don't know why suddenly all these snakes were appearing. And when these guys came back, we saw another snake follow. They were going to the death. We saw another python. It, it, it was crazy. <laughs> and I remember some of the guys saying, ah, oh, no, we don't want to live here anymore. But we had a friend of mine, I was called in Simane a man of God, you know. So we, we were visiting him and we told him about the snakes. He said, no, 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 no. You don't move away from there. The snakes must move. <laughs> so the snake must move. Do you have anywhere to go? And it was a beautiful place. We only paid five. We, we, did, we were not even paying rent, I remember. It belonged to the Boy Scout. Association. There's no, I'm, I'm, uh, you can't move away. We are going to pray and the snakes must move away. You have authority. Mm. Yeah. And I remember his prayer, I'm Simon Ape, he's late now, and he said that no snake must be seen in the vicinity of that woman in Jesus' name. We never saw another snake again. Despite the fact that this place was near them where there were a lot of beds, and snakes sometimes come for the bed. That's authority, that's capacity. That's what is in you. So, God gets angry. And then the other thing, like I, was, uh, I shared, God will never command you to do what cannot be done. He said be fruitful and multiply. You can multiply. <laughs> you can multiply biologically. You can multiply through the preaching of the gospel. You know, if you say, call yourself a minister of the gospel, you must know that the, 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 you can multiply. The church can grow. If you do what the word of God tells you to do, the church will grow. If you don't mix that word with faith, nothing is going to happen. So God gets angry, he comes, he finds there is no one there. He says, well, what's going on here? You can perform miracles. Anybody can perform miracles. Don't tell me some of these guys, you know, they, 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 with, even some of them with fake miracles. You can perform genuine miracles. So, <coughs> God will never command us to do things that he, the Bible says he brought the animals to be named by Adam because he knew Adam had the capacity to do that. Now, the last thing, I think, when it is blessed, it has been supernaturally enabled. When it is blessed, when a blessing has been pronounced on it, it has been supernaturally enabled. The moment God pronounces a blessing, means there is a supernatural enablement. 
That's why you see this all over the place. And God blessed him. And God blessed him. And God blessed him. Now, some of you, if you remember, I think it's uh, Pastor Maro who was teaching and on, on the blessing. And he says, uh, uh, being blessed means may God be connected to your situation. That's powerful. So when God blessed people, he was connecting himself to their situation. That power of God, that enablement of God. So the moment you say God blessed them, it means their situation became connected to God. So when it has been supernaturally, when it has been blessed, it has been supernaturally enabled. God blessed them. You are blessed. Amen. And I, I know we, we have blessed you many times. This is what bothers me sometimes because we, we, we pray for you all the time. <laughs> After every camp meeting, blessing in the name of Jesus, in the name of oil. <laughs> then some can mix that with faith. They go out and do great things. But some people, you know, it just becomes a tradition. Oh, I got blessed. Oh, I got blessed. They don't understand the capacitation that comes with that. That's why it came in that order. No command to do anything until after the blessing. That's the enablement. So, now, in finishing off, let's read this last scripture here, passage of scripture. For there were about 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit in groups of 50. Amen? Amen. So, and they did so and made them all sit down. These are the disciples. So they, they, there are 5,000 men who have come to hear the word of God. So they are told, make them sit down. And they did so and made them sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Now, the other version says uh, 5,000 men, women, and, and then and women and children, which means the, the, the 5,000 was only referring to the men. Because in those days, they only counted the men. Hallelujah. Amen. Even today, we should be counting the men. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Amen. But at that time, if you were told to count, you would skip the women and the children. <laughs> These terrible things in, the, in those days. But anyway, so you can... Now, look at this this way. These, these, these disciples have counted 5,000 men. 5,000 men, what is the average number of children in a family those days? Usually not less than five or six. But we'll put a conservative number and say maybe, let's just say two. So it's mom, dad, two kids, that's four, multiplied by 5,000. That's 20,000. And that's a conservative estimate. Because those days they would have large families. So we can say probably they were not less than you know, uh, uh, 15,000 to 20,000 people. And remember, these were not working people, nine, nine to five jobs and so forth. So if there was something interesting, everybody would be there. <laughs> <laughs> they were not at work or anything like that. So they are gathered there. And, you know, so the Bible, I think, says they had been there for what? For two days. Something like that. So <clears throat> then the disciples realized the people were hungry. And they go to Jesus and they say, these people are hungry. You know, they need to eat something. Th that 15 or 20,000, even 5,000 is just a massive, massive figure. So then Jesus, uh, uh, well, well, if we follow the story in the different gospels, I think somebody came to Jesus and there's a young man here with five loaves of bread and two fish. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then Jesus said, uh, bring them. And those five loaves and two fish were brought to Jesus. Then when they were brought to Jesus, he looked up to heaven and blessed them. 
Kalamanda Rabashi Kalabasai. Retele Mahanda Riboka Mutsumajai. This is the second level. This is the supernatural, which is in everybody who has the Spirit of God in them. Because Jesus said, it is expedient that I go so that I can come. And that same Jesus who blessed five loaves of bread and two fishes is in you. He lives in you. And the reason why he came back, that was another level of capacitation. Kalabasanda <laughs> Rabashi. So Jesus took the bread, five loaves, and two fishes, and spoke a blessing. Father, this is what we have. We have more than 5,000 people here. We're going to feed them with this. I bless this in the name. He didn't say in the name of Jesus. That's what we say. But he just blessed, spoke a blessing. Now, sometimes when we read the Bible, we don't think. If you want to feed 200 people, even if I want to feed you here, and I say, go to the shops and buy food, you need a car. <laughs> That's for you here. Your food here will probably, or let's say you, there was 50 or 100 of you, it will fill the boot of the car. How do you carry food for 5,000 people or 15,000 people? Where did it come from? Because there was no place which was filled with enough food to feed the 15,000. The disciples were just told, okay, I've blessed it, give it to them. So what, what was happening there? What, what they, they believed what Jesus said. They believed the blessing. They believed it's going to work. These people are going to be fed. Because Jesus has blessed this bread. So, he broke it, I think, I don't know whether they put it in two baskets or whatever. Then they carried th those baskets to the 15 or 20,000. Not a 20 ton truck of food, because that's what you need for 5,000 people. Yeah. A basket. What happened was, every time the basket was extended and then somebody took something out, somehow the basket was filled again. Because it was blessed. It was blessed until the 15 or 20,000 were fed. And there was more left over. What if the disciples had said, ah, come on, where, where is the food? <laughs> you know, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Because he did not ask, where is the sacrifice? Just go. Do you know that when Abraham sent Hagar away, after, you know, he sent all those concubines away, the Bible actually says he was very concerned about the young man. Then God said to him, don't worry, I will make him a great nation. Then he just gave his, his concubine something, a gift, and he said, go. What normal person does that to his own child? He did it according to the word of the Lord. Amen. God said, I'll take care of him. I'll make him a great nation. <laughs> you, you can't do much for him. So, we need to understand that there's a capacity in us to do great things. If we don't, nothing is going to happen. If God spoke a blessing, we, we have been baptized in the spirit of the Almighty. We have capacity. I can tell you story after story. I remember one day I woke up, I was staying with my sister. It was a very rough time in Botswana. Very little, uh, you know, uh, money and all that and all that. You know. So 
She says, ah, the mealy meal is finished. She says, if I cook today, we won't have any meal. It's right in the middle of the month, I have no money. I just walked in there and put my hand on it, and I said, this mealy meal will last until the end of the month. It lasted until the end of the month. That bag did not grow in size. Now, if you see my sister, this, the one who comes out of me, Caroline, ask her about it. There are two miracles that she knows that happened. That mealy meal last. It, and you know, we forgot about it. It was when the month ended. She said, oh, but it's him. We are open somewhere. Then the other day, I was late for school. I was going to college. And she had been late putting the water. I don't remember whether I needed to wash in that water or it was for tea. But I was late. I said, can you make me tea? She says, no, I've just put the water. But how can you do that? I'm late. I went into the kitchen. Into the, uh, we had two rooms. And the little corner we used as a kitchen was in her room. I went in there, put my hand on the kettle. In the name of Jesus, boil right now. And it boiled. You can ask her, she will tell you that. I was with Colin Yati, the pastor of Harvest Ministries, and Lucky Moy one day, and we were walking to town because where we lived was about five kilometers away from town. So we are walking, we are walking, then this car comes, and we wave it, we wave it, we wave it. And uh, the men passed. We were tired. So I remember saying, may that car stop and never move again. Right away, the car do, 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 stopped. <laughs> I was with Bishop Nyati of Harvest Time, Lucky Moyo of Agape Ministries, and another. They were there. And we walked to town. We walked past it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to town. It was in the morning. We came back in the evening, around 5 o'clock. The car was there, and now there was a mechanic. Go, 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 go. So as we were walking past, I don't remember who among the, the fellows you know, who said, Brother Sam, look what you have done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of them said, look what you have done. Said, but he said, look, these guys are stuck here. So as we walked past, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, may that car start again. And it started. <laughs> <laughs> these are things with witnesses. These are not miracles which happened in 1925 or whatever. No. <laughs> and we can talk about other things that people in the living world, church, know. Pass it. This is not imaginary. This is not just some funny story, you know, about how, who we are and so forth. And so. Go out there and grow God's church. Amen. Go out there and get people delivered. Amen. Go out there and experience supernatural provision in your life. Amen. Go out there and pray for people to receive miracles. And they're going to receive miracles. God does not tell people. Jesus said, go into all the world. Those that believe shall lay hands. Mm -hmm. You are not a man. 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 Pray by faith in the name of Jesus. The moment somebody says, I'm sick, put your hands there in the name of Jesus. And believe that God is going to do it. He never said you'll do it. He said you'll do it. Whatever it is. She called me one day. Baba, I can't see. One of my eyes is blind. It's not even three weeks ago. What, what happened? I don't know. I just can't see. And I didn't say hey, this. I said, let's pray. And we prayed. And it has opened. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, she said it happened against her mother, I didn't really care. I said, she is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. So, <clears throat> God is angry with people who don't know their capacity. He's angry with them. Once people who rise up to be what he has called them to be. Teaching by Charabo to Papa, the Hutter, Jerori, Jefotitan, and so forth and so forth. I know Pan supernatural pan up. Cabaskiti, Cacocacha Buddhist, Sigistitan, Muchi Baskiti, Mom. 
Nous avons une chose, nous avons ça. Ça va pas Alléluia. Tu n'as pas de ramas, nous avons besoin de vivre. Supernatural. There is the natural level, but we have a supernatural level. Alléluia. Natural level, but no chance of going over to us. We go to next level, and powerful things are going to happen. We have got the capacity. We have got the capacity. We have got the capacity. You have got the capacity to do great things. I don't care, they are talking about this variant and so forth. It won't kill you, just you will have the capacity to survive this. We are blessed. Amen. Understand what the meaning of blessed is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Yeah.